Jamie is waiting for me, so I've got lots of questions to ask him. So let's do it. Right, I'm going to start by asking you um, to go way back and, and tell me why you began the drums in the first place mm. and how old you were. Mm. I've been asked that question a few times. I can't remember when. I remember a moment at a desk in school and tapping with sticks. Very common for uh, as an introduction to drums is a desk and pencils that's a common introduction and I do remember asking a teacher if there was a drum teacher at school but I don't think it was another it wasn't a, cu a couple of years when I actually started again seriously thinking about drumming because all the boys in my class were drummers there was 14 boys and 14 girls and all 14 of them were drummers Gosh. so it was brilliant you know and there was all there was one fantastic there was the, the best drummer in our class Adam his name was and we were he, we were sort of we would evolve around Adam and at lunch breaks we'd go to the music room and set up massive drum kits there was like four drum kits in school and we'd get all four of them and make a massive Terry Bozio style drum kit and we'd all take turns but Adam could, could really play and uh and I think that's that's it. That so I don't know what age that is. Primary school. I don't know what age primary school people yeah, it are goes now. Yeah, it goes up to eleven. So I think yeah. Before I left primary school, I was I was I, when I left primary school, I was obsessed with drums. Right. So it was okay. at some point towards the end of primary school. It was definitely to do with all the boys in my class. Definitely not to do with my school. So when I okay. asked my school for drum lessons, they didn't have a drum teacher. It was about the kids in my class and the enthusiasm that we had that that started that. And I think that drum I did have drum lessons in my next school. A guy, a very brilliant man, named Tom Reavy, and uh, was my first drum teacher. And he never he didn't let me play on the drum set. He he might say I'm wrong about this, but my memory is that I didn't get to play a drum kit for at least a year. Wow. And uh, the, the drum kit, would, it would be a room this size, maybe smaller, and the drum kit would be there and there would be a practice pad there. And I always remember the kid before me that would go in, he, he was at the level where he was on the drums. And there was a tiny window, just like that, tiny window, and you'd look in waiting, and you'd look at the drummer and you'd be envious. And then I'd be in there and I'd be doing my paradiddles, doubles and singles. And sort of, uh, I realise now that instilling such a strong foundation then meant that when I transitioned to a drum set there was some something instantly was happening because there was a certain amount of ability and I think there's a moment when you hit you get sit down at an instrument and it doesn't do what you kind of feel like it should do in your head and you get a bit deterred and then you'll go and find something easier or something yeah. so I was grateful for I out, out of all the 14 drummers that were playing in my class I'm the only person still playing wow. so I think that's something to do with that when I actually got to play drums it wasn't just bashing around it was actually a, a music was starting to happen and uh, I'm grateful for the not being a, not having the opportunity to play drums straight away I reckon if I was put left to my own devices I would have bashed around and really enjoyed it for 10 minutes and um, without that level of ability I couldn't get to where I wanted to there was an instinct in me yeah. for drumming but that that instinct is is useless without a certain amount of ability because you won't be able to realize the instinct so it's that moment when you have an instinct and you realize that instinct's potential that's that's the most empowering moment as a, as a musician or a, as a human because you've made that moment happen that moment hasn't been bought it hasn't been given to you by anyone else this is a, this is a very i'll say it's 
attentively that it's almost a spiritual feeling because it's it's the first time you realize that if you apply yourself and you put energy into something and you follow this thing inside you that's telling you you start following and trusting the instinct and um, great things start to happen so just by having a, a strong foundation right at the start of my journey right at the start before my journey even began so because of this teacher making you yeah wait. I believe that that were you frustrated at the time were you like oh when am I gonna get on that naturally drunkard? naturally frustrated naturally frustrated but we were still doing that thing in lunch break where we were setting up drum kits and 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 we were still bashing around and there was a gang mentality within all of us with all 14 boys and you know that's an important thing as a, a young person yeah, of so you know even if I wasn't necessary even maybe some of those boys weren't necessarily necessarily passionate about drumming but we were, we were there was a vibe about it and that's what was going on uh, I find it interesting that I'm the only uh, person playing drums still and I think it's to do with that bit at the beginning you know and, and then having these moments where by doing that and following this Good things happen so just one thing at a time a little good thing happened there ah okay if I keep doing it another good and you know all, all I'm, I'm only chasing these little good things my whole life but you know in small increments they become big things yeah you know I'm not I've never looked for one big defining moment I'm just looking for little ones like that you know I, I maybe it would be great to be one of those people who put everything happens at once but you know, I, I'm. That's not been me, and I, and I like that my career has just been. You know, it's started there, and now I'm somewhere around here, and I'm going to go wherever I'm going to go to. But I'm going to dictate where I go to because I'm going to carry on doing what I've done. My whole life, yeah. my whole career, my not even career, my whole time playing drums. I'm just doing what I've always done. And you had that that foundation at the beginning. Did that bring about a discipline in you that made you the drummer that you are today? In those early years when you were having lessons and you, you know, your teenage years, were you, did you practice a lot? Uh, yeah. Did you, were you obsessed with it? What, yeah. what was that? Would you go up to your bedroom at night and, and just, would you, would you look at a book? Would you play along to records? How oh, did you? It was you... extreme. It was a very extreme, but I, I don't think, my, my teacher instilled my work ethic or, or desire for greatness, but he instilled the, 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 the basics, the, the, the brick and mortar, like the absolute, it, you have to build your house on something strong. You have to have, you have to build it on, on uh, something of substance. So I built whatever I have done on something of substance and that's always, done me justice uh, so <clears throat> but it's still me who's who's I hear my the teacher or people haven't told me no. it's still an inner desire so that's inner desire comes from you you know exactly you, your drum teacher is going to tell you to practice for an hour every day well that's not good enough for me I, I needed to practice 10 hours a day that's what made me feel comfortable you know and then it progressed you know I I stopped school and, you know, I just practiced. I was very lucky to have parents who acknowledged that their child was doing something positive. He wasn't out on the streets doing something. He was sitting and studying something. And it would have been, you can't, my parents were great for not going, look, you need to go and get a job. They were look, saw this and went, wow, okay, that's not normal. Let's embrace that. And they, they, they enabled that, that to continue. They didn't make me go and have a paper round. Yeah. They didn't make me do anything. They let me I I embrace this instrument. And by, so that's the next thing. So my drum teacher, Tom Reavy, and my parents are, are being not, not relaxed, but acknowledging that there is, this human being is doing this off their own accord. Yeah. That's something, you know, special. Were they musical themselves? No, no. 
and the fact that they acknowledge that just shows that they have art they understand art yeah you know so they might not be musicians but that they are uh, they understand they're sensitive to that they understand the nature of that and so those two combinations is why I'm here now everything the other reason is just my just general desire okay and uh, sort of interest in this instrument and then this interest grew into an obsession and then uh, and then you know after about 10 years of doing this it becomes you you know it becomes a part of what you do the same as brushing your teeth have eating drumming or what you, your passion whatever your passion is yeah. Uh, if it's truly a passion, it becomes as important as breathing. So, do you get if you don't? Do you like to drum most days? I, I have a problem where, um, and I realised this in around two thousand and ten, where uh, for some reason I wasn't playing. For some re well, I know the reason, but you know, th there was a few days where I would be like, mm, just don't feel so centered after a few weeks I'm like you know what I'm not doing my what I always used to do and which is play drums every day so if I don't play drums every day I I just feel not very like you know when you haven't brushed your teeth you feel yeah. a bit fruity you know, you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, I haven't brushed my teeth oh yeah that's I'm, you know it's the same thing it's like, I've got to do I've got to play uh, well in fact I don't play drums every day what I do is I, I, I practice I condition my hands. Okay. I, I only play drums with music, okay. in music. I don't practice drums on my own. Now, now drums is an instrument, to, it's a collaborative instrument. It's, uh, it, well, it's maybe not. I mean, maybe people will disagree, but for me, this instrument is just part of a, a puzzle. It's a part of a jigsaw puzzle. And uh, it's most relevant when you've got um, musician, other musicians around you and you're making something, you're playing music. That to me is when this instrument is at its optimum, when it's when you're playing and you're reacting to other human beings. So I find it a bit frustrating playing drums without mu music and musicians around me. But what I do is I, I love to practice on a pad or a pillow. I love to condition my feet and so, and you know, and just, so when I do sit down, any idea can be realized. Yeah. There's no way on, on earth that I'm going to allow myself to be playing music and want to do something but not be able to do it because my hands and my coordination are, are on point. Yeah, it's like an athlete, isn't it? It's like not being able to... Because I, I, I make this analogy like sometimes with the drumming thing. You know, if you want to be a runner say and you want to do a fu I mean I'm not a runner but I try and go running to stay fit um, occasionally but you want to do sit-ups and you want to do other core exercises so that you're able to be the best that you can and I think it is the same with the drumming isn't it it's like you were saying you've got to be able to be your physical best so that you can channel any creative idea that you have you yeah. can realize that yeah, yeah. to the best of your ability yeah you want to be able to converse like we're conversing now now if i was missing certain words i wouldn't be able to express what i'm trying to say here yeah. to you if i didn't know the, the words it's the same with this so i'm playing i'm hearing this bass player play and i've got this idea and i can't do it because i'm not, not technically able to want that's where i think technique is important yeah right everything else is about your taste and your personal your ideas your vibe your personal unique take on art that and that isn't something a drum teacher can give you or anything that is that is some people might say you've either got that or not i disagree with that i believe everyone has their own style and vibe it's just that that people's journey uh, sometimes um, the road they're on that isn't an important thing to have or it's pushed down by other situations in their life fortunately that's been something that I've had that I early on realized was the only thing that's going to separate me from men everyone because we can all learn how to play John Bonham beats here you know but 
it's about the create creation, the creation of that. We can all recreate everything. We can recreate anything. You go on YouTube now, type in how to play, mm -hmm. and everything's there. So you can just now and we got we can just go to YouTube and learn how to play. But it's about the creation of that rhythm or that thing. That's what's the important part of being a musician. Now, technique comes into play only for faci facilitating that. that. Yeah. That is the only relevance of technique. Now, people will be watching this, maybe going, no, I disagree with that. I tell you, I'm right about that. I promise you, I promise you. And uh, I encourage all young musicians, old musicians, anywhere, where you are, that, that when you're listening to something and you feel it and you're like, you know, it should go this way or that way, you know what, that's your taste. Now, if you follow that, that will become just, it won't even become, it will just become, the, this is the better way to say it, going back to your exercise thing. It's a muscle, this taste is a muscle, and the more you work on that, the stronger it gets, and it just becomes who you are. It doesn't even become a thing where, oh, should I do it this way, that way? Your instinct is just your reaction. That instinct being your natural reaction, the closer you can get your instinct to being your actual real reaction, that's the purest art you're making. Because you're just, you're something coming in, yeah. and then it's in your reacting coming out. The moment where you're like in the studio or on stage, well, it doesn't happen on stage, but you're like, should it be this way, this way, this way, this way? Well, I don't know. Usually, the first thing you thought is the way. And what happens always is, Maybe not always, but you'll go around the houses and try every way and you'll go back to that first thing and you're like, wow, why didn't we just do that the way we first did it? And you've spent a whole week, I, I'm, I'm dwelling into different things now, but no, I'm but just saying the importance It's interesting of because do, as you've got older, do you f feel that your instinct, you know, that you are able to execute? I'm here. Yeah. I'm about here, you know, and I'm going to be there. You know? yeah. And that all the people that we love and all the people that, that you know, how to play, the, the person that you, you're you Googling next, yeah, yeah. the reason why you're Googling them is because they were there. They're Jimmy, you know, all everyone. John, Keith, we all, they were so in tune with themselves and confident confident enough and being enabled to embrace it don't forget that th these people weren't they had it but the fact that they were put in a position where they could um build on that yeah. that's why why they got there you know that's and so it's like we've got to push ourselves to this place no one's going to give you the opportunity to 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 to, to work this out you've got to make it happen you know, you've got to, it's ideal when you're younger because you've got more lifetime, you know, and when you get older, things happen and we, people get responsibilities. That's, that's another blessing for, for me, how things happened younger. And yeah. I, I acknowledged a lot of what I'm saying now to you then. And all I've been doing is refining these thoughts. And now I'm articulating them to other human beings. All these ideas have just been in myself for, dec for, for a decade or, you know, but now, uh, you know, I'm getting to speak to you and try and put some of that energy out. And, you know, you take, take from it what you will, really. It's, uh, it's just, this is the other thing about all the words that I'm saying. Everyone's come up is completely different and everyone's journey is completely, this is just how I do it. This is just how I've come up and this is what works for me. Yeah. <clears throat> now you've spoken to Andy and you've spoken to uh, lots of other people and you will continue to, to speaking to lots of other people and they will all have their uh, different take on things and the common thread I think will be um, ultimately the work ethic between all of the people that you ultimately talk to. Now what makes them do what they do, I don't know because I'm not them. Yeah. yeah? But, but I do know that I've acknowledged that all these greats, there was a deep desire to, to, to make this happen within themselves. 
And when did you want to be like a good drummer? Did you want to be in a band? Was, Is that what there was I the drumming? Session, session drummer. Session drummer, yeah. And I started playing. I, there was back then a session drummer was something of. It's a different world now. So, so session drumming is a, it's a very odd thing now. Session being a session musician is a is a is a is a, it's an interesting place now. But when I was coming up, it was a really, a, you know, it was like whoa, whoa. It's like being like a scientist or mm. a person who builds aeroplanes or spaceships. You're a session drummer. Whoa. I started off that, and I I was playing with people, and then I and then I joined a band. And uh, that band was the Noisettes, and that's yeah. my first. Uh, I, I was never intending to join a band, okay. ever. But it, I, I vividly remember the day when I, it, uh, I, I thought, okay, I'll try this. And I, I, I remember we were. I was playing with Sia, and we were I doing. I love Sia. I love Sia. I grew up listening to Sia, mm. by the way, like when she was in Zero Seven, mm. but. Or, you know when she supported Air at Somerset House. This is years that, I was, ago. That, so that's you. the moment. That's the moment when I got. That was the day. No way. Yeah, so I, I was at that yeah, concert. So I was playing there. That was me. I was that playing. was you. Yeah. So I, and I remember vividly remember sound checking, and then walking in front of the stage, and Air are now about to sound check, and I get a phone call um, saying. So this lady in America has heard the, the, this recording you've done with these two people you, I met last week and, and she wants to fly you to America um, next week and do a show. And I thought, and I, I hadn't been to, I hadn't been, I don't think I'd ever even left the country to, to play drums yet. So I'd, I think I'd only toured England and... Um, you must have been I quite said, young as well. Cause yeah, like, I was young. Yeah. Yeah, I was really young, and uh, I just, I just said, yeah, you know, I'll do that. And I remember being on this plane, flying over to LA, and they'd given us this penthouse, and we, we each had a car, hmm. and we, we, and we had a tech. We never had a tech. We weren't even a band. You know, we'd only, I'd only met them. We'd only met like a month previous. And this lady who, who subsequently signed us, she hadn't even heard the music actually. She'd seen a, she'd seen a picture, I thought it was my next door neighbor. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> she'd seen a picture of us and that was enough to fly us out there. And, and it was, I remember walking down Sunset Boulevard with these two new people and it was warm and we went to buy ice cream. And I remember sitting in this intersection on this piece of grass with these two people, two people I didn't really know, and I thought, yeah, I'll try this. I'm in LA, uh, you know. It's and then Robbie Williams walked past. Oh God! But that's but Robbie Williams isn't famous in America. So he was walking around. No one was, and we invited him to the gig, and we gave him tickets to our show, and it was just a really weird, really weird moment. But I remember that transition from being this person who you get told what time to arrive to this thing. Oh, would you like to? stay here or would you like this and, and I'd never been asked you know I'd always just accepted anything and I thought okay I'll try that and then we signed a deal that a week later and eight or nine years later that journey had finished for me yeah 2010 and uh, I don't even remember your question now Laura but, but I know you know what nor do I but I loved what I it was like about session drum but I carry on because I want to hear. I want to hear this. I'm happy to hear the story if you don't mind telling. What was the question? No, it was like, were you planning to be in a band? Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the moment. Somerset House in front of the stage. And I was there. And you were there that night. There you go. And I, I I just remember taking the phone call and going, okay. I never even thought about being in a band. Yeah. As a kid, you know, you, you know, you'd you'd look at bands and you'd you'd want you'd love that. But as drums became more obsessed in my mind all I wanted to be was a person who plays drums every day you know I I didn't care I wanted to be like Matt Chamberlain or Andy Mm. Andy Gangdine you know like these people who play on records and and it seemed so exciting to me um but I, I I actually prefer being part of a unit and being part of um I enjoy uh 
uh, being in a band more than an independent musician. Yeah. I enjoy it because, and I've got uh, I've got perspective on both sides. So I, I before I joined the Noisettes, I was working for people. Noisettes happened, and that was me. After the Noisettes, I was working for people, and then I joined the Stereophonics, and now it's back to being in a band. Mm. So I've got perspective of each, of all of both. Yeah. A uh, uh, great perspectives, bec- uh, and uh, for me personally, I enjoy building something um, over a duration of time, and I I enjoy building up a rapport, and I enjoy um, that journey as more than one-off moments yes i understand yeah and i know that one-off moments can be terribly exciting keeping yourself moving and and challenged but what i'm trying to do is well i'm trying to do something different with the stereophonics i'm trying to accentuate history the past but i'm also trying to help facilitate what all these brilliant things that could or want to happen in the future so um with the noisettes, I was trying to build something from start. So yeah. the stereophonics is different because that's got the history. But I was trying to do something from the beginning up, you know, yes. and build. And so I, I do. We know we had no one coming to our shows, and by the end, we were flying around in the private jet. So you know, we did that. And and with the stereophonics, I've been in the band five years now, and we're entering a new chapter of the band's life and I feel part of that genuinely and um, that's a, that uh, satisfaction is a different satisfaction but I'm into that that's where I'm happiest yeah. is, is building something with um, with uh, with my brothers you know with my, with my band I mean talking about the stereophonics now you were a fan before, because I, yeah. uh, you were in a covers band, right? Yeah. A Stereophonics covers band. Yeah. So when you got that like call, cool, yeah. you know, were you like, wow, like yeah. I could, you know, how how what was that like? I remember the day, and it was it was in July, and there, I I was on reading it, the music news, and I saw that Happy A had left, and I a few weeks earlier had been at. JK, uh, I don't know his second name, but the singer from Jamaica, he yeah, has yeah. a house in the countryside, he's got a studio there. And I was there a few weeks before and the, the guy producing that session worked on Dakota. And I felt comfortable in the moment reading he- that Heavy Aid left, I felt comfortable texting this guy I met two weeks previously going, yo, just read that, can you let the boys know if they need any drums? I'm there. Uh, about two or three minutes later, I get a text from Kelly, which wow. is ridiculous. You're just looking at, and you don't know the number. You don't know the, n- the number's new, so oh. you don't know who it is yet. And you sort of get a feeling in the first few words that this could be Kelly Jones, and then it says Kelly at the bottom, and you, you just can't even believe it. But I'd had interactions with the band uh, previously. I we. Noisette supported Phonics at the Royal Albert Hall in 2009, the Teenage Cancer Trust show. So I met Richard and Adam then, and Javier. And that year, we Noisettes played Isle of Wight, and when we played the MTV tent, uh, Jack, Jackie Jones, Kelly's future wife, was in charge of that. And so I had these moments where I felt sort of comfortable yeah. putting out that yo I'm here Kelly thought I was still in the noisette so he was like but aren't you still in the band I was like yo man that ended that's gone that's done that's done and he sent me a list of songs to learn and I was like I'm, I know all these songs you know I'm done with these songs and he sent another text saying well learn these songs I was like I know these as well just yesterday he told me that um we did an interview for NME and he told me that when I was texting back, he was like, this guy's either really cocky or really <laughs> good. And I, I like that. And um, wow. it was actually just that I'd been in the Phonics cover band. Well, it was a cover band that played lots of Phonics songs. We played a few other songs as well. But I knew the first three albums just... It's in the blood. Yeah, so you, you grew up playing... Grew kind up of playing, playing those like, songs. You, so, come on, give me your five uh, classic... What are your five top stereophonic songs before you joined, first of all? 
Uh, what were your well, favourites? Yeah. So as soon as you said those words, the just looking came straight into my mind. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to just give you that one because the reason why I want to give you that one is because I I want to tell you why I like it. Yeah. And it, it, there's there's some Stuart Cable was was such a remarkable musical unique drummer. When you listen to that song, it's deceptively uh, it washes over you in a beautiful in a beautiful way. But when you isolate the drum and you sort of look at what they're doing, he does this amazing thing where he plays the toms in the verse. And he plays the stick on the side. And as a kid, I'd never seen that. Just the fact that, you, you know, you think that you've just got to play these things yeah. here. Oh, but you can hit that. I was like, okay, cool. So he, he did, and then... And then uh, the transition from that to the chorus where he goes to hi-hat and snare. A beautiful natural lift. You know, you've not had the snare in the verse. You've not, we haven't heard that yet. So when you introduce the snare, oh my God, it's, it's a huge, and then with all the instrumentation changing and the lyric changing, it's the perfect transition. The, one of the greatest musical transitions ever. And then what does he do going back to the second second verse he goes back to the toms but he introduces a snare every other beat just to let you know it's still there mm -hmm. yeah. you know and then he's got this cheeky way of getting back into the next chorus where he does it he hits the crash at the same time as the snare ba, da, da, mm. oh and it's just so economic um so so much taste uh so he also did this thing where he would double up all his kick drum he would go, he, you'd often go, dum, ba, dum, ba. He would do this, dum, dum, ba, dum, 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 ba, dum, dum. So you've got this thing that feels like a train going. This, this thing here is just moving the whole time. The, Richard might be playing, dum, dum, but this is going, dum, dum, dum. Just that driving thing. And I, I do remember thinking as a kid, why do the stereophonics rock harder than Oasis or Blur? Why? Why? You know, they all of those bands, brilliant songs, but why do the stereophonics rock? Why do they rock? Why does Oasis, you know, they're just sort of there, and Blur sort of there, <laughs> you know, in a good way. I'm not disrespecting No, them. no, I like no, them. I know what you're saying. It's like, it's driving, isn't it? It was rocking, and it was always rocking, and I always, you know, it was, you know, you realise these, as later on, you realise these things are happening that are enabling that energy to occur and so Stuart had worked out that when he does that it goes off and so there's a lot of songs uh, looks like Chaplin you listen to that and you think he's just doing boom ba boom he's doing boom boom ba boom boom, boom. almost like dance music you know it's got yeah. that incessant repetitive repetitive rhythm that just keeps the whole energy up and uh, so you know uh, it's not just five songs that I can pick up and reference about drums from the Stereophonics first few albums. It, it, isn't, a, it isn't songs, it's, it's actually a whole attitude that yeah. I picked up from his play. And um, I'm spending my whole time just trying to get back to the true essence of that. All those records that he played on, I'm trying to channel that. And then the records they made with Javier, and, and when Jim Lowe came more into Jim Lowe's, uh, the, uh, Kelly's uh, co-producer, they worked very closely together. They're brilliant. And, uh, you know, when Javier and Jim come in more, um, the I'm trying to channel that vibe now. Yeah. You know, the band changed. You know, that's, there was a transition in sound and, and style and vibe, and the world had changed. Uh, and you know, trying to channel that, and now I'm, I'm now it's we've got a clean pa palette, and we're just whatever comes into the studio that day, we're trying to make it. We, you know, we reference a bit of that, reference a bit of that, and ref and, it, and it's it's very pure and it's very exciting. But but going back to your question, it, uh, Stuart's ethos is what excites me uh, greatly, and now I know why and what what. But before it was just like. This I really like this. Yeah. I, I, I acknowledge my instinct acknowledged that as different to that and that. So 
you know, once again, I, something here told me that there was something happening there, yeah. which I need to, which was intrigued me and resonated with me. Um, and it's only now I kind of understand what it is. You know, I've been in the band five years and I, I've yeah. only just made those revelations in the last year. Wow. Literally. Like that kick drum revelation. I've always understood the just looking uh, yeah. arrangement. But that kick drum thing, I only in the last year worked that out. Because what, yeah, because I, I mean, one of my, my favorites probably from that time is like Dakota. I love Dakota. Yeah. Like, and that, that, I mean, when I, that is quite a, I mean, that's a challenge for me to play. I find it really, because it's quite fast as well. But it's got, what's that, what's going on with the bass there? It's a double, yeah. So it's, yeah. And but a, that's such a driving song and the way that it changes from chorus to verse. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, bam. yeah. So you've got, you've got, you're doubling up on that snare. It's, it's the perfect transition. So you're doing a snare every, da, da, ba, da, da, ba, and then you go from every other beat to bang, bam. Yeah. It's once again, it's the same thing as the principles where that kick's doing, moving on every beat. It, 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 it creates this, it, it's actually Motown. Yeah. Motown really, has taken that but when you apply that Motown town feel into rock or what what not it, it's quite exciting yeah you know, but now I'm trying to find ways to have that feeling but not do that anymore yeah I'm trying to find a way to because that feeling is so special but you know I'm just trying to find another way to do it otherwise all the songs will start having Motown <laughs> beats yeah I know I know what you mean but I love that song. It's Me too. A person, as a personal one. Yeah. Um, what, so what's it like being in a band like the Stereophonics? I mean, like, you you know, people coming up to you all the time. Like, is that, is it, do you just, do you kind of just like, this is my life and this is what I do? Or do you sometimes like, oh, wow, I've made this happen, but like, it's bonkers. Yeah, I think you know? that every day. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean... It's it's unbelievable blessing and uh, there's this deep something deeper than than um, I feel in tune with the boys in the band. Yeah. I feel like we're all trying to do something still, you know. And I feel like I really understand I, because I've had an experience in a band and you know I'm older now and I, and I've had experience playing music. I really feel like uh, it's right and natural. Yeah. It feels really right. It doesn't feel like I'm cheating or I don't deserve this. It, it feels like I've got this experience and I've also got this ability. Yeah. And I'm also sort of like I like the same stuff as them. You know, we're genuinely friends. So yeah, that's. I have cool. moments where I'm like every day where it's. I have what you just said, you know, wow, this is bonkers. But then at the end of it, I like, I, I, there's a, there's a reason in there. It's yeah. not just, it's not fake. It's not, there's substance behind the, all those. It feels things. natural. It's part of you. It's part of me. Yeah. But there's real things happening that make you feel like, oh, I understand why I'm here. Yeah. Like there'll be things why I'll be like, well, if I hadn't gone through that 10 years with the noise, that's, I wouldn't know how to deal with this situation there. And just being able to d deal with that situation and, and, and bring some perspective to it can actually help the whole scenario, or whatever the scenario is, positive or negative. Now, that's why you're there. Yeah. That, you know, it's not empty. There's not, you're not just there. You're, you're bringing something to the table. And if you're bringing something to the table, you feel it feels right. If you were there and you weren't bringing everything to the table, it might feel like mm, a bit of a spare part. I don't feel like a <laughs> spare part. I feel like a part of the the, the fabric of what it is. Yeah. And so because I feel like that, the, the the general feeling of this is crazy doesn't get too doesn't get too overwhelming. And I guess it will probably be in moments that you think that 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 the band in general think that it might be you know playing in front of. A, a mass audience where you yeah. all are like wow uh, that, doesn't that have that wow moment that doesn't yeah, get exactly. old and that doesn't get uh, that's a huge we got when I joined the band they, they got so much they, they nothing is um, what is the word like nothing's like assumed everything's an honour you know it's, it's a pleasure it's, it's, it's nothing is like 
there's no arrogance within it. it it's always like, you know, yeah, the, the, we're going to do another tour next year and, you know, we're doing the arenas and it'll be my fourth or fifth time playing the, the arenas with the band. But it's the fifth, fifth, they've been doing this for 15 years before me. So yeah. they've been doing that. But they're like, it's excited, really excited as, as me, as anyone. Ah, oh, that's so, that's, that's why, you know, you are the band you are because you're all excited and it's like every day is a new, Every day is fresh and every day is new. Very lucky to do this, and they know. You, everyone understands that. Oh, old, oh, you're older. You get, you realize. Wow. Okay. Wow. This. I can't believe I'm getting to do this. And and you know, it's it is a really amazing thing to to be able to write songs and play them to people. It's so simple, such yeah. a simple thing, but it is such a a, a, a huge uh, thing to realize to actually make happen and. I don't really, it's kind of uncharted territory with, with what's going on with the Stereophonics because it's their 20th year and it's our 20th year, but they've had a 20 year run and who else is around from 20 ah, years? It's you know? it's so it's like, it it's uncharted territory for us. And you know what? Our audience is getting younger and, our, and we're getting pop more popular. So yeah. it's like, this is interesting. This is things that are really happening in America now. And, you know, we go all over the world and it, it and I've got a perspective from 2011 and I've got a perspective around now and I tell you it's getting bigger and you've got the album coming out the, yeah, the album, album. Out next week yeah. yeah that's it and I was saying earlier that I'm kind of a bit obsessed with one of the songs well, All In One Night <laughs> All yeah, In One Night it's a very special song and um, you know how I love the the subject matter of that song yeah. I love the the that, that beat with the double snare yeah, it's you know great. It's great. Um, because it just does something. It just creates a feeling yeah. and a kind of urgency of emotion. And then you've got that beautiful top line of, you know, of the, the guitar, guitar the over the yeah. top. Yeah, it's magic. It, it's a it's perfect combination of sounds. From my point of view, uh, it's a perfect combination of sounds uh, coupled with uh, a beautiful lyrical sentiment. You know, it, it's it's always what you're trying to strive for is is you've got a story it's a beautiful story you've as got well, a story yeah. and coupling the story with a magic background yeah you know and it, so you've got this and and, it, and you don't always get it right you know you know you get bits of it right but that i think we can say that that song has never been questioned that it's always been like that there's never been any different variations of it it's always just been there we go that works like that yeah it works like that we don't need it it's 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 very exciting you know it's a very brilliant beautiful track which i think is going to um you know it might it might bridge the gap to another uh body of work uh you know but it certainly lets us go there again if we want to go to that place um and so basically it's opened our whole vocabulary up a bit yeah. um, because we can now do music where it doesn't have to have real drums on it, it can be have synths on it, it can be a programmed beat you know you kind of maybe think that you know you're a band, it has to have real drums and it has to, it doesn't have to have anything man you can be whatever you want it to be you know, as long as the intention behind it is pure then, then it is exactly still you and music takes in many forms, you know, like the and and you know, you have the drums, you have program things, you have hybrid you know, a lot of the amazing work that Andy's done, you know, that opened up a whole new field of, of stuff. Yeah. So, um the album's out next I can't wait to hear the album. I'm really looking forward to that. Um and then you've got a tour coming next year. We'll be touring next year. Okay. We toured this year. We played we played the uh, I can't remember how many festivals we played, but we played a bunch of festivals. We had a beautiful time. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're just going and going. We've been on every year now. We, we yeah. play summers and or we do an album campaign or, you know, and, uh, and so we're really in tune as a band. You know, we're really on fire right now. So it's, we're looking forward to going to Europe in the beginning of the year, hitting here March, I think, and then um, off around doing things 
you know, yeah. I'm sure we'll be back to do festivals next year as well. But you know, it's it's a very great time for us. Uh, it's about this sort of time in when a, a drumming is a big drumming uh, a drum position is a big position in the band, yeah. and it and it, it you know it's I feel like I'm starting to get good within the band now, right? So that's natural. It doesn't just happen overnight. You yeah. know, it doesn't happen over a year. You get good. It was never bad. Yeah, it's always good, but now um, it's getting serious. Mm. Now it's uh, now it's it's a different thing now, and it's a um, it's a very exciting time for us. And couple that with uh, a really uh, an album that we're very excited about a record, a new record deal with, with Parlophone, and uh, that's exciting. And uh, y you know, we just look into the audience and really young and it's like okay cool that, you know it's very exciting yeah I mean that is an amazing thing for a band you know that's been around such a long time to to be getting a younger audience uncharted territory yeah. I think you know, you know which, and it's not going to stop you know like we're just going to you know just going to keep going you know the same attitude I had with my desire for drumming is, yeah. is exactly the same as what we have individually between Kelly Richard and Adam exactly the same desire I don't know what we're looking for necessarily but there is something there yeah I think if you know what it is that might spoil it as well yes yes so you know and and, and if you knew what it is you might be able to google it and find out quicker yeah so it's sometimes <laughs> it's sometimes important to not know what the fuck yeah. You, uh, no, no, that you can swear yeah. on this. I'll try and think, yeah. Well, I've done well actually, I don't yeah. swear at all. Yeah. But um, you, sometimes you don't know what you're looking for, but there's this overwhelming urge inside you. And uh, and you get on, you all get on as well. Is tours fun? Like, yeah. is it well, fun? We go, out for, we go out for dinner and we go out, have, you know, I was with them yesterday and we, we ended up having a little play. Yeah, really. It wasn't scheduled. It's a big, do we have a play? Let's have a play. Do you know what? That's so unique. You, you, everything is so scheduled. Whenever, as soon as things start becoming professional and serious, everything has to go through ten people, and yeah. nothing. You know, it's we when we're not touring, we rehearse every Thursday. Okay. Not because we've got a show coming up, because we love to play. Yeah. So, so it's a, it really is a different thing. It's, it's exactly how I would like it to be. It's exactly how I think music should be done. It can't just be uh, about the business, about the it, ha the... it can be, but you're not going to make anything good new. The, only the good new stuff, you can live off your history. You can live off a number one record you had 10 years ago. Yeah. You can tour for the rest of your life with success that you had five years ago, you can go. You you can. Um, you, so you don't even have to be friends. <laughs> you just have to do the things that you did five years ago. Uh, you know, and stay in five star hotels and be treated like you know what. Or you can uh, be really excited about it. And well, no, I don't, it's not an alternative for us. We're really we love being hanging out we love playing I'm terribly beyond excited to hear what Kelly is going to do next lyrically or what he's going to I live for those days I get a phone call every so often I've got something new can you come down and those days are the best because mm. you know I'm part of that you know I, he's called he's asked me to, 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 to come to hear this for the first time and so yeah I mean that's interesting actually so he he comes up with a like a lyrical idea and then he'll say well he say to the band look you know listen to this what do you think and then do you all sit in the room and just kind of that, how does it how does it how that beat that we were talking about mm. all in one night right oh, yeah. so how did that come about I mean Kel had that and he wanted to reference the, there was a movie called Drive Ryan Gosling and there was this sort of the sound, I think, I can't remember the artist who did that, super uh, Vangelis, I don't know, no, it wasn't Vangelis, but um, 
he, he referenced that and when you re when you say that you you just sort of know that that's what the it's sort of got this sort of militant hip hop repetitiveness it's a looped groove you know so you can't you can play that beat yeah on a drum kit but it does something different yeah you know but when you play it on when you have those electronic those electro sounds and you do it and it's and it's exactly the same every single time it it does something yeah and then if you're building stuff on top of that it it sort of sets a tone for everything you're building so I think just by in, so just by introducing that vibe he had at the beginning of the process of making it um, set a whole tone for the whole of everything coming down onto that track was inspired by a new fresh vibe that you we haven't messed around with yet truly I mean there's an element of it on on there it's we've been touching and Kelly's been touching on these sounds over the last four or five records but now that's the that's that's all in one night is probably the most definitive version of using electronic drums um, and just an attitude. Uh, it, it's it's great. I think it's refreshing as a writer. You know, I think it's really empowering as a writer just to know that you you can do whatever. It doesn't have to be anything other than what you think or feel. And it does. It felt fresh. I mean, when I heard it, I was like, "Ooh, it is this fresh. is this is." This is something. This is in, exactly. You know, this new. is something. You've got that. It, you've got that beautiful melody. Yeah. With that heartbeat, yeah. like you said, all the yeah. way through that. Yeah. That that pulse yeah. all the way through the record. Um, we love that. Human beings love that. You know, we we really like that heartbeat. It's within us. It's the same pace as when you walk down the street. You know, you got this. You know, this. We love that feeling. You know, we also love that feeling of of mania and erraticness and energy but we also there's a there's a comfort to that mm -hmm. and this what i said it earlier you're always trying to take your this sentiment of your song and couple it with a, a music and instrumentation that melds beautifully together and that's what you're always trying to do is trying to find meet these these two worlds and you're trying to join them together in a unique exciting true way and i feel this record it we've really nailed it and particularly with that that composition there all in one night yes yeah mm -hmm. if you haven't got it get it because it'll probably be out by the time this is out you know what it's out now it's out now. That track is out now. Oh yeah, all in one night. All yes, in, I have the, that. You can see the video. Video is. I like the it's video. It's a beautiful video, and you know, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Check it out now. Um, okay, moving on from the stereophonics, Jamie. I'm going to ask you my drum quest question, which we have talked about. Yeah, but yeah. you know, what makes a good drummer, yeah. in your opinion? Yeah. I know we've spoken a lot, but I've got to ask the question like that. Yeah. What's important and what makes um, a good drummer? Oh, it's it's uh, character. Character, yeah. It, it's, it's it. Yeah, and and uh, what you had said earlier yes. really, re you know, really resonated. Yes. Okay, and we also touched on earlier, who are good drummers to you? Like mm. you, like, you know. Current, but who were you influenced by? Well, but I can very today. easily answer that. Now, yeah. The best drummers on earth yeah. are singers, the uh, songwriters, songwriters yeah. because they know they already know the spirit of the song because they composed it, but so they can get to the absolute source of where that beat should be. And you'll hear a beat, uh, a, a drummer. You'll hear a beat that a drummer hasn't played, and it's a singer's played or a guitar, and it's always got the thing that you would never imagine doing. It's pure. It's the purest. But so actual drummers. Um, oh, I love all the drummers, really. You know, there's I love all drummers. Uh, aspects of all drummers I've taken from every drummer on earth. There's an aspect mm -hmm. of the. There's very rare I find a drummer that I love everything about them mm. even keith moon there's parts i don't like yeah 
So, but there's elements I'm obsessed with. So, I found relevance in every drummer on the planet. Uh, recently, even just seeing, uh, who did I see play recently? Um, oh, J.R. Robinson um, he did this drum clinic and he played on all Stevie Wonder things. And I've never seen, whatever he is doing, right, I've never seen that before in real life. I, that was something else. Okay. It was like the record was happening in front of me. It, wow. I, I can't even describe it. I don't even know what it is. It was the same moment as when I saw the phonics when I was a kid and I acknowledged that something was special happening there. I saw that man play and I acknowledged that. And that's not usually the type of drumming I go for. That's an elaborate answer to that question, but <laughs> that's that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to talk about this self-awareness thing because you strike me as someone... This is something that's come up in previous interviews. You seem very self-aware and, and you know, I was saying just off camera a moment ago that, you know, you're like a f philosopher, uh, philosopher, um, philosophizer, philosopher. And um, what is it that makes you good? What is it, you know, like, why were you wanted as a session musician? And what, when other drummers talk about you, what do they say? Why is Jamie good? Jamie is good because... Oh, I don't know why, why, what other people would say. But I know that when I'm playing music, yeah, all I'm trying to do is find a way to accentuate whatever the music is. I mainly play song music. So, so who, what, whoever wrote that song, hopefully they're in the room as well. I'm just trying to find a unique way to take that to another level in the hope that what I do will show them them something new about what they've done so then they can take what they've done to another level. To assume that they've just written the song and that's enough, well, I don't think it's enough. Yeah, you've done, that's cool, right? But I believe I can find something within the song that you've written that you didn't quite realize it could go that way. And by being a person who can bring something new to your table, the songwriter's table, you will always work because you, that's all, as a songwriter myself, all I want to do is exceed what I've, I've written yeah. something here. All I want is to find a way to make that better. even better yeah. or, and to think that it is perfect, perfect is wrong. Until it's out in the world, there is still an, a, a place it can go. Until you've said, no, we've finished working on this and it's going out, that, that's it. But, it, but the, the, I still believe that, um, I don't know. All I want to do is exceed what they thought is possible. Yeah. And if by doing that, um, it brings something to their uh, whole world, which is exciting and fresh, and you'll be someone who they will that that you'll always be you wanted. Yeah. Always. You can't program instinct, and you can't really um, compete with someone who's thinking about it like me. You cannot just you you can try, but I'm doing this all the. I'm, There's no box with you. That you you're constantly wanting to push the boundaries yeah. and want to. Uh, do better, get more, yeah. invent. Yeah, and by doing that, you do something on a bigger level for the whole of music. Mm. And so musicians will, I don't know what they say about me, but what they will understand is something is happening and it's changing the way they do something in a positive way. If you can play something and that person is so inspired, they end up doing something then that comes back to me yeah. and then I go backwards and... Chain reaction. That is the true... I've said this before, but that is X factor. That is the X <laughs> factor. Not what we've it's become, but that is the true yeah. essence of X factor. That is legendary. That is the stuff which... That is the stuff people Google about. It's the holy grail. That's yeah. That's that thing where if you can get that instinct to your actual reaction the closer you can get that instinct to being your natural reaction boom 
So now I'm in, I'm back here. So whatever I do, I I, I come at it however I, I do, and you're in, hopefully inspiring. Now and that's that's all. That's uh, what was the question again? Yeah, it was. I I can't I can't remember the questions I'm asking. Yeah, you got me. I don't there. know what the question but is. But I, I think it's a good I, answer. I, I, I like your answer to whatever the question was. I want to ask you something else. Now you play. You learn to play a couple of other instruments, yeah. correct? Yeah. Now, that's interesting to me because yeah. I've recently uh, played, learned to play the ukulele. Yeah. Because I wanted to be able to play a melodic instrument yeah. as well, that would enable me to see the drums from a musical perspective. Yeah. How important do you think, or what effect did that have, learning uh, other instruments? Learning a tonal instrument changed my life, really, because uh, I felt like I'd got to the a really great place as a drummer. Really fantastic. I was really comfortable with it. But um, I found that learning, even just learning how to play a song, someone else's song, gave me an insight to what... The drums were doing within that song and it made me realize perhaps why that's like that yeah. and that was the next stage for me I'd, I'd built a foundation and I, I'd had a foundation I built on top of that foundation and then I was looking for something deeper uh, which is beyond this instrument so you sometimes you have to step away from the thing you love the most to, to really get to the next part of it so I had so I, you know I'd it's not really stepping away. I just moved to here and went to the bass and went to the piano and the guitar. And I found that um, le playing guitar for three hours would would be the same as playing drums for 10. Yeah. So I was getting back to playing with music, with pe musicians, and I was, my musicality was through the roof. A coupling with my ability I, that's what I that's what I always had a strong uh, sense of music but once I started investing time into building on that like I invested on drums yeah couple that with that I mean it's crazy you know it's that's pure that's the purest it is because this is kind for me it's irrelevant without that yeah for me I don't hear no songs with just drums. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, exactly. You start creating a style that just has that, and I think, you know, maybe I'll like it. But <laughs> I like songs. Yeah. I, lo I am about songs. I am maybe not even about drums. It's just that drums is what I learn. It's my tool. Yeah. I'm about the, com the composition. I'm, I'm a, I fell in love with music. And then within music, I found that this, I was listening to music before I started tapping on sticks. Yeah. My dad would play music in the car, or you hear it on the radio as a kid. I've been listening to music my whole life. Yeah. You know, it's it, that's what I was. That's what I realised I love is music, and I love this instrument within music. But so I wanted to learn about music. So you learn about music. Yeah. <laughs> Very simple, and I think. I think mean, it's so important, and I remember hearing drummers talk about that as a kid and thinking, "No, I ain't got time to listen to another, to play another instrument." And I was right; I didn't. I had to spend, dedicate all my time to this to get to where I needed to go to. But at a certain point, to get to to my next step, I needed to to just go to there for a bit. Yeah. You know, I learned Pro Tools, and uh, you know, and I started recording and and by, and recording songs every day. And then playing drums on top of the everything that you've all recorded, it's a it's a whole new thing. Yeah. And then then when you play, it's it's I can't even articulate it really, but it's it's uh, it's your ABCs. Your your your. I will say I'm fully rounded. I'm well rounded yeah. now. I'm more of like an egg shape right now. <laughs> but one day hopefully I'll be a football shape. You know. Yeah, but but I started off as a square. We but all like, start off as a square as drums. Drummers, we, we just deal with this thing. We don't have to deal with melody or whatnot yeah. or these things. This is just a foundational instrument, you know. It's a supporting instrument. You but know? you're still so young. This is what I was saying as well. Like, mm. you're, you're young. I mean, imagine, imagine what you're going to be like. You know, actually, this leads on 
But where do you? What, where? It's like an interview, isn't it? Interview it question. Is an interview. Yeah, interview. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking yeah. that. Where do you see? What do you see yourself doing in in? Yeah, I mean, how can you even answer that? Like, no, you, can't, you, you, can't you can't answer, answer that. But I was going to say, I yeah. can I can bring something to to what you're hinting at. Yeah. With this instrument, it is very much like wine. Yeah. And the, and the best drummers in the world, like J. R. Robinson, the chap I mentioned, who I'd never heard play before, only on record. Um, that man, I I acknowledged his X factor because of the duration of time he's been doing this and he is just in tune with what he does yeah and that you cannot fake that that comes with time that comes with time so i uh, maybe it's a, a, a all-round thing but i think with drums you get get better with time but you get better at playing time yeah we all i can play in time and you know everyone can play in time but truly understanding time I, I used to say I don't say it much anymore but I used to say it's like the scene in the matrix when he actually sees it that, that first time and you can actually see all that green stuff and it's like that's the matrix well that's with with I I feel time in such a different way as I did it, it uh, five years ago I I feel it it's internalized and I feel when beats are fraction off I feel it in such a weird way now, and uh, I'm and I, so I think of someone like Andy Gangadine or Jeremy Stacy or Steve White, and they've been playing for over twenty years, thirty years. I I, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know their ages, but I just know that they've been playing. they all I know is they're older than me, and they've been they started around the same time as me. So I know that hopefully, if I get to their age, I will have. My understanding of time now, if it's like this now, it's in a good place. But it'll be in a great place then. Because all I have to do is continue doing what I do. Yeah. And as long as my desire and my, my vibes stay strong, then I just do what I do. And, and you don't know what's going to happen next week. So it's best not think about it. What, what is best? Just to try and make what you're doing today the best maybe think about what you're doing tomorrow but it's usually best to just try and make what you're doing today the best and whatever whoever you encounter and uh whoever you're working with or wherever you're playing make that the best thing that you can do and no like oh next time no 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 this time you yeah. do it and you you make sure that you you change people's lives you try and put yourself out there and um, as long as that instinct's still there I think that uh, who knows where I could end up being but you know I, I, I will always be in the stereophonics you know mm. for whatever as long as they're playing I'll be there because yeah. it's no better home for me as a drummer I'll always play and play with my friends other friends and work and you know you make produce and write and I'll always do that because it feeds into that and that feeds into that and it's just you know that's what you do but um, I'm very excited about the future as always uh, but I'm much more excited about the now because the power of I now. can do it I can do now I can't do tomorrow because t someone might call me in the morning and it and it might change the course of my day you know or someone might you know, I don't, but what I can do now is speak to you and put my heart out there and when I play my drums wherever I play that's the same as what I do yeah. you know I, uh, and when I leave this and I go home and when I s see my cat or I see my wife I'm gonna apply that same attitude you know and uh, by putting that into the world hopefully that will come back and if it don't come back what usually happens is you stop you find other people to, you know, yeah, yeah. and so that's bands, that's music, that's art, that's life, you know. So I'm in a place where I, I'm trying to think of uh, things on a, on a perhaps a deeper level than, than I have been, but I'm finding that it's really relevant to me, yeah. for me. It's probably boring for everyone else. No, Joe, I can so relate to what you're saying. I mean, like, I'm off camera, but <laughs> I'm nodding my head because 
you know, like, uh, it's so interesting. And like you say, it is hard to, art I get what you're saying and you articulate very well. Mm. You know, it's hard to articulate. Um, you kind of answered this, but just to end, young drummers, uh, young musicians, anyone out there, what, what advice would you give them to hold dear? What would you wish you had known then that you know now, if there is anything? And just, yeah, is, is there kind of a particular message that you'd like to give? Well, like you said, I think that the, my best advice would be to, I, I've touched upon lots of other things within this conversation, which, which really are, are the essence of what I think is important, right? But ultimately, ultimately, I, 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 if it's real and if you really feel it, you're gonna make it happen, right? And if you and it, and everyone watching or whatever, you know, you'll know if you really want it. Yeah. You know, you'll there'll be a bit of you where you're like, actually, I don't really want to go away for years on end, or I don't. Want... You'll know if you want to do this, and if you know, you know, and I know you know because <laughs> I know, and you'll be doing what I did and what Andy did and what all these people do. And which is just do it. Go out there, throw yourself out there and make stuff happen. Throw yourself into the world and do it. Don't question it. Do it. Fuck up. Mess up. Win big. Lose big. All relevant. The amount of times I, I, I've won a few times, I've lost much more. You know, I've probably learned more from losing than winning. Take risks, yeah. yeah put, you, you have to put yourself out there. You have to put yourself out there. I, 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 one, I want to end on this story, but because it sort of sums up something for me. I, uh, it was up in 2011, and I got asked to play for a lady called Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Mm -hmm. Very amazing music, amazing, legendary. And I, and the guy at the end of the conversation said, "You can read music, right?" And I said, yeah, of course I can read music. And the gig was on a Saturday, that was a Tuesday. Put the phone down, went to Denmark Street, bought, <laughs> bought five or six books, how to read music, all the DVDs, crammed it, right? Um, got to the gig, um, the, he, the guy put down two music stands for me. He opened up the paper, the paper went six pages long. Not a page, like all these other books. And I, and I was scared, right? But I still did it. <laughs> oh. But, you know, was, there was no way I was not going to play for Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. There wasn't any way on earth that I was not going to have that. Of course I can read music. If you want to, you can learn enough in four days to get through a kick. I promise you, you can. If I'm not even that sharp with numbers and whatnot, but if you know you know and you do things like that to make stuff happen and that's what i mean people will know in their hearts truly if they want to dedicate what needs to be dedicated to get to where they know man and and uh, that's cool because not everyone's you're you're where you're supposed to be might be somewhere else and actually if you when you get there you'll be like i'm so glad i didn't go down that road because this is where i'm supposed to be we, you've got to follow yourself, man. You know, you've got to follow. There's a lot. This show business is very exciting, yeah. But it, it that that show business is the, is this part of it, yeah. Everything else is the creation and the hard work, you know. And then if you do well, you get to this world where you end up showing your work. But that's only, that's at the end. That's there. Th this has to happen first, yeah. yeah. And that is sleeping on floors. That is getting up at whatever, that is no sleep, that is no teenage years, that is no party that night, that is no whatever it is, that, so that there is, we see this and yeah. go, I want that, we see that and go, I want that, but what you don't maybe realise is that that is that of, of what is actually happening, that's the tip of the iceberg, there is so much under the water level going on, that isn't all private jets and whatnot. It's 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 making art, 
which isn't about any of that. It is so pure and simple and, uh, and joyful and tedious and whatnot. It can be everything. And, and that's the moment. That's what it's about, right? And it's, and it's, you know, if you want that, you're going to have it. You are. Because you're going to do everything it takes to get there. And um, if you're not supposed to have it, you, you might have end up. Okay, you might, you might not. I don't know really. But I said it at the beginning. Everyone's come up is different, and yeah. so you know, you might get a gig a week after learning how to play drums, and and you're winning for your whole life. Or, but that all I can say is my journey. But the message that you're giving, which I love, which I love, I think this is the message that you have said. If you want something, if you really want something yeah. in your heart, go and get it. Yeah. And you will yeah. get it yeah. if you want it. Because you won't be given it. Mm. Yeah. You don't get given things in this world. Yeah. You, you go and get it. You sometimes have to fight for it. And are you prepared for that or not? And I'm not throwing up a gauntlet. I'm just saying what I see. No. I don't want it to be scary. I don't want it to feel like it's this thing. This, well, bear in mind, let's, make, let's take it back from where we're talking right now and end on a different place. Um, that, here and here you'll have ideas. Follow that. That's it. Just follow that and that. That's it. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Which one though? The head or the heart? <laughs> they're, both, they're, both, they're both Sometimes important. they argue. No, no, because what ha that's the same thing. That's that getting that place to there. It's getting the, this is this is the truth, yeah, and this is uh, sense and possibility, and it's about making you realize every time you have an instinct that it's okay to follow it. Now, in this world, we might get told that to not follow our individuality, you know, because it you might get bullied because you don't have the same shoes or the whatnot. We're very much in the society where you, to be different is not, it's a bit, it, well, it, less now, but there was a time where it's like, you know, you're not encouraged to follow that. So I, I think that the, the more you follow both of these things, the more in tune they become with themselves. Yeah, yeah. And with that will help you in a whole manner of things with your life, not just music, you know, that will make you, give you a better, better life uh, this thing here no one can buy this thing this is purely your thing this is the thing you should invest your time into yeah this stuff here yourself so and on that i'm gonna go home hey do you, you know what out. i'm come coming out. round oh i'm coming round how i mean like my mind is blown my mind is blown <laughs> I've, I've got to get on camera because normally I do this wrong and it ch chops my head off. Jamie, that was amazing. Thank Come you. on, let me feel these drummer hands. I've got to feel these drummer hands. Get, give me some magic <laughs> through them. Pass the vibes on. And yeah, pass the vibes. I could do with some. And Mr. Jamie Morrison in the house. Respect. Rock on.